us as coaches and as dads and as husbands that we're going to coach the way that we were, we were taught. You know, we're going to coach the kids on the way, you know, our father worked with us. And it kind of sparked some ideas because we saw some kids breaking down in tears from dropping a pot fly. So we kind of started pondering some thoughts like, you know what, maybe if we put some things on paper that kind of help coaches and dads direct a practice, a communication, a one-on-one -on -one time with the young man uh, to understand the value of your words, your, your body language, your actions. You don't even have to speak. You're going like this on the side, kicking dirt, is letting that kid know that, you know, that his best isn't good enough. Now, there's also a line between, you know, having a, you know, a baseball team, and you're going out there and you're looking to win. You're not going out there to lay down. You know, that's a given. Going out there to play to win. You're trying to go out to prepare the boys to play to win. That's a given. Set that aside. But understand your role. Understand your position as dads and as coaches. You're a coach. You're a leader. You pull them along with you. What comes out of your mouth matters. The most influential people in my life were coaches. Not teachers for me, because school was just, you know, somewhere I went to go play high school sports. You know, so if a coach says something that inspired me, I thought that, I thought that I was the best thing of all time, but if somebody rocked my world, said I wasn't good enough, or I stunk, or crossed the line verbally dropping some kind of bomb on me, that scarred me. All right, those are the things that I carried with, even going into professional baseball, that I battled with as a professional athlete, which helped us to get to this uh, message of hope and this organization, and we started kind of building uh, sports curriculums and faith-based curriculums and secular curriculums to try to help dads out. Now, just to go real quick into this, there's one piece at the end of a practice there's something that I do with kids when I go out there and work with practices. At the end of a practice, I'll come out and have all the kids together and you close the practice out. And I'll pull one kid out and say, Jimmy. And I'll pull Jimmy out and talk to Jimmy and say, hey, you know, man, Jimmy, you are awesome today. You know what? And you're, you know, you're, you're a great kid. And I'll say something good about Jimmy. Now, the next thing is to have every single kid on that field say something good about Jimmy. Not sports related. Not sports related at all. Just allow the kids to connect on a level that it's not compare and compete. You what I'm telling you? It creates the best environment. I know some of this stuff is going to seem soft and kind of sissy, and you're going to be like, ooh, I don't know about that. But trust me, if you kind of find it in your heart to kind of implement some of these small things in your practice, it changes everything with what you do. And then you start connecting with young men on a level where you're not going out there just being a coach and striving for your own goals to win. You're now more concerned about the lives of those young boys you're looking at. I mean, our purpose as a coach is just to change lives, to be a part of something special, to be on a competitive sports field, to be able to help lead these young men into a direction with some of the things we had issue with, issues with when we were growing up. All right, this is your opportunity. And if you create that right environment, the kids will respond, the parents will respond, and now this parents gotta, the parents got to check their heart when they got to come to you with a question like, why isn't Jimmy hitting? Well, hey, I'm just a dad coming out here doing my best job for your boys. All right, because I care about them. So go through the message of a hope piece, cruise through some things. There's some great ideas there because when we find ourselves competing, you know, our filter that we manage as men and our minds, the things that we think that we don't say on the sports field, that filter finds holes because we find our, our emotion kicks in and we start reacting. All right. And that comes from within. So again, you start doing these little lessons, it'll start helping your heart out a little bit with why your purpose as a coach is and start leading these young men and saying some positive things at the end of the year, good or bad, however they did. When you see a kid walking through the park and they're dropping high fives because you're the best coach of all time, that stuff feels great.